today's pick for Name That Song is... And today I am doing a totally random book haul for absolutely no reason except there was a sale and I took advantage. I am trash for book sales. I have seven books in total here but before I get into that the song from the last video was All of Me by John Legend. I'm 100% convinced that he wrote the song as an ode to Harry Potter. Maybe I'm projecting but who knows. Also I'm kind of in the mood for dramatic readings so that's what we're gonna do right now. Excellent. Let's get started. The first book I have here is one that I saw on B from the bookish Pisces Twitter. Pisces is? Pisces Twitter. Anyways, there was an excerpt from this book and it was just, oh, adult content. It was nice. Okay. So I knew I had to pick this book up and the other one in the series the first time I went book shopping. This book is A Princess in Theory by Alyssa Cole. <clears throat> From acclaimed author Alyssa Cole comes the tale of a city Cinderella and her Prince Charming in disguise. Why did, why did I go with that accent? I don't know. Let's continue. Are you in America though? Is she in America? Between grad school and multiple jobs, Naledi, N Naledi, Naledi, Smith doesn't have time for fairy tales or patience for the constant emails claiming she's betrothed to an African prince. Me neither. I've gotten those. Sure, right. Delete. As a former foster kid, she's learned the only things she can depend on are herself and the scientific method, and a silly email won't convince her otherwise. Prince the Biso is a sole heir to the throne of Thelo. The solo. Jeez. That was difficult. Shouldering the hopes of his parents and his people. At the top of their list, his marriage. When Naledi mistakes the prince for a pauper, Thabiso. Did I say Thabiso? Thabiso. Ever dutiful, he tracks down his missing. M missing betrothed. His missing betrothed. When Naledi mistakes the prince for a pauper, Thabiso can't resist the chance to experience life and love without the burden of his crown. The chemistry between them is instant and irresistible, and flirty friendship quickly evolves into passionate night. But when the truth is revealed, can a princess, in theory, become a princess ever after? Yeah, probably. It sounds cheesy. It's a little bit of a retelling. I love it. I'm excited to get into this one. The only problem here, if you've been around on my channel for a bit, you'll know. If you're new, I hate mass market paperback with a damn dirty passion. I hate it. But it sounded so good that I will suck it up and read it in mass market paperback. Actually, the only hardcover version they had was large print, and realistically, I should have picked that one up, but here we are. The next book follows in the same vein as the first one, and this one is A Duke by Default by Alyssa Cole. From what I've read, the main character of this one is best friends with the main character of the last one, or something. Let me know down below in the comments if that's actually it, or if I'm just pulling shit out of my ass right now. Anyways, New York City socialite and perpetual hot mess Portia Hobbs, same, not the socialite, hot mess, yeah, is tired of disappointing her family, friends, and most importantly, her herself. Herself. My God, I can't talk today, but also same. An apprenticeship with a struggling sword maker in Scotland, oh wow, okay, that took a turn, is a chance to use her expertise and discover what she's capable of. Is this sword maker Orlando Bloom from Pirates of the Caribbean? Did he move up in the world? Cause like, I would apprentice to that. Turns out she excels at aggravating her gruff silver fox boss. Ooh, silver, okay, okay. When she's not having inappropriate fantasies about his sexy Scottish burr. I like it already. Tavish McKenzie doesn't need a rich, spoiled American telling him how to run his armory. even if she is infuriatingly good at it. Tab tries to rebuff his apprentice and his attraction to her, but when Portia accidentally discovers that he's the secret son of a duke, rough around the edges Tab becomes her newest makeover project. She's a socialite, of course she's gonna do that. Forging metal into weapons and armor is one thing, but when it desire burns out of control, and the media spotlight gets too hot to bear. Is that really the only thing that's too hot to bear? I don't think so. Can a commoner turned duke and his posh apprentice find lasting love? Again, most likely. The next book continues the trend of romance. I'm just, I'm in a romance kind of mood, man. I don't know. I think it's because I've been reading too much high fantasy, like a adult high fantasy lately, and I just need, I need a break. This is my break. This next one is The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. If we're being 100% honest, this is one of those ones that like Goodreads made me buy it. I kept seeing it everywhere. I know it's like a hate to love type thing, but I'm not 100% sure about more than that. So let's find out together. I mean, if you already know, then you're not finding out with me, but 
Let's just move on. Nemesis. Noun. One. An opponent or rival whom- who, Oh, that's whom. Okay. An opponent or rival whom a person cannot best or overcome. Two. A person's undoing. Three. Joshua Templeman. Lucy Hutton and Joshua Templeman hate each other. Not dislike. Not begrudgingly tolerate. Hate. Hate, hate, hate. Hate, hate, hate. Double hate. Loathe entirely. And they have no problems displaying their feelings through a series of ritualistic passive Ritualistic, passive-aggressive maneuvers as they sit across from each other, executive assistants to co-CEOs of a publishing company. Two things here. Is it like, do they play footsie too? Because I'm, I'm into that. I'm, I'm down for that. And it's publishing. I like it. Moving on. Lucy can't understand Joshua's joyless, uptight, meticulous approach to his job. Fair enough. Joshua is clearly baffled by Lucy's overly bright clothes, quirkiness, and Pollyanna attitude. Both kind of baffle me. Now that they're up for the same promotion, <gasps> their battle of wills has come to a head and Lucy refuses to back down when their latest game could cost her her dream job. Dot dot dot. Dot. But the tension between Lucy and Joshua has also reached its boiling point and Lucy is discovering that maybe she doesn't hate Joshua and maybe he doesn't hate her either. Or maybe this is just another game. I can't cock my eyebrow, but like... I'm in love already. God damn it. I'm such trash for this kind of shit. Mom, if it's good, I'll let you know and you can have it after. Because I know you're into that shit too. Tea break. I forgot that I had Spotify up on my TV next to me for the whole name that song bit. Can you just look with me? Okay. Oh, that's, that's not where that was. I forgot that was there. And I looked over and Hilary Duff was just at me. Let's move on to the next book. The next one is another Goodreads made me read it. Also because if I love the idea of the last one so much, I'm probably gonna love this one too. This one is 99% Mine by Sally Thorne. Same author, I'm anticipating loving both. This one is a little bit different though and I knew a little bit more when I picked this one up, but like a smidge. Anyways, crush, noun. A strong and often short-lived infatuation, particularly for someone beyond your reach. That's a definition that I knew, goddamn. Darcy Barrett has undertaken a global survey of men. She's traveled the world and can categorically say that no one measures up to Tom Valeska, whose only flaw is that Jamie, Darcy's twin brother, saw him first and claimed him forever as his best friend. Is he gonna be in love with him too? Despite Darcy's best efforts, Tom's off limits and loyal to her brother, 99%. There's still 1% though. I'm gonna just get into that 1%. That's the problem with finding her dream man at age eight and peaking in her Cophography. Photography. Yeah. Okay. At age 20. Ever since, she's had to learn to settle for good enough. Man, why do that to yourself? Get a hold of it. Shit. When Darcy and Jamie inherit, inherit, inherit a dilapidated cottage, dilapidated, did I say dilapidated? <laughs> A dilapidated cottage. Dilapidated. Okay. Cottage from their grandmother, they're left with strict instructions to bring it back to its former glory and sell the property. Darcy plans to be in an aisle seat halfway across the ocean as soon as the renovations start, but before she can cut and run, she finds a familiar face on her porch. <laughs> Who could it be? House flipper extraordinaire, Tom, who has arrived bearing power tools. Oh, he's got a tool belt. Oh, and single for the first time in almost a decade. Climb them like a tree. Did I say that? Did I say that? Shit. Suddenly Darcy's considering sticking around to make sure her twin doesn't ruin the cottage's inherent magic with his penchant for gray and chrome. That's the only reason, sunshine. I know, I get it. She's definitely not staying because her new business partner's tight t-shirts or that perfect face that's inspiring her to pick up her camera again. The face? Is it just the face? Or is this like, you're taking nudes. Don't lie to yourself, man. Soon, sparks are flying and it's not the faulty wiring. It turns out only 1% of Tom's heart might not be enough for Darcy anymore. This time around, she's switching things up. She's gonna make sure Tom Valeska is 99% hers. Bish. First of all, selfish. Second of all, I like it. But like, he can be your brother's best friend, but also, what's the word I'm looking for? Your lover? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, 
my god, I hate myself sometimes. Anyways, the next book is, surprise, Goodreads made me read it. I have zero willpower, it's fine. This one is The Wedding Date by Who Are You By? Jasmine Guillory. I like this cover a lot, it's just, I like it. I knew a little bit more about this one too. I think it's Guy Meets Girl in Elevator, Gets Stuck, Invites Her to a Wedding. Am I right? I vow to take thee as my date, to pretend to have and to hold, from a hustle dinner to reception end, till Sunday, do us part. I think I was right. Agreeing to go to a wedding with a guy she gets stuck in an elevator is something stuck in an elevator with? Agreeing to go to a wedding with a guy she gets stuck with in an elevator, excellent, is something Alexa Monroe wouldn't normally do. She's definitely not the spontaneous type. But there's something about Drew Nichols that's too hard to resist. Can I pause here for a second? I just finished watching Mamma Mia again and like, she's not spontaneous. She's Harry! I'm spontaneous? No, Harry, you're not. Alexa, you're not spontaneous, but like, go for it. Drew has never found it hard to meet women or to know just when to leave them. Fuck boy! But now, on the eve of his ex's wedding festivities, he's minus a plus one until a power outage strands him with the perfect candidate for a fake girlfriend. Pause. Hold up. Why are you going to your ex's wedding? You're asking for trouble. Okay. From the best man's toast to the bouquet toss, Alexa and Drew have more fun than they ever thought possible. <laughs> they have sex. But before they know it, Drew has to fly back to Los Angeles and his job as a pediatric surgeon, and Alexa heads home to Berkeley, where she's the mayor's chief of staff. And neither of them can stop thinking about the other and the sex that they had. They're just two high-powered professionals on a collision course towards the long-distance dating disaster of the century. Or closing the gap... what? What? Or closing the gap between what they think they need and what they truly want. That still doesn't make sense to me. Let's try and read that again. They're just two high-powered professionals on a collision course towards the long-distance dating disaster of the century. Or closing the gap between what they think they need and what they truly want. It made sense the second time. See, as much as I love the hate to love thing, like the deep hate to love, and I've loved you since I was a child, I love this kind of, we're stuck in an elevator. I wanna climb you like a tree. I'm cool with it. Like, I love that too. The next book that I have is a sequel, so I am not going to do a dramatic reading because I don't want to spoil things, but I will do a dramatic reading of the first book. This book is The Obelisk Gate by N.K. Jemisin. Is it obelisk? Is it obelisk? I've never known. Please tell me. Anyways, the first book. Where is it? I just finished reading it. I'll be back. I'm back. The first book is The Fifth Season, also by N.K. Jemisin, but you got that. If we're being totally honest here, I didn't hate this the first time I read it, but like I hated it. A third of the book is written in second person. You look out the window. You are holding a book. Man, fuck off. I hated it. I reread this for a group buddy read recently. Fuck if I didn't love it the second time around. The second person still bothered me, but god damn it, I love this book. Why do I do that to myself? Anyways, the fifth season. This is the way the world ends. It starts with a great red rift across the heart of the world's sole continent, spewing ash that blots out the sun. It starts with a deal. No, not deal. It starts with death, man. What are you? With a murdered son and a missing daughter. It starts with betrayal and long dormant wounds rising up to fester. This is the stillness, a land familiar with catastrophe, where the power of the earth is wielded as a weapon and where there is no mercy. God damn it, I love this book. I'm really excited for the second one. Obelisk, obelisk. Obelisk? I don't know. Educate me. I mean, I could look it up myself, but like... Chakra Bordy! Where you at, how? She's right next to me. Thank God for alphabetizing. <laughs> My God. If that didn't give it away, the next book is also a sequel, so I will do the same thing, and I will read the synopsis of the first book, as to not give things away. The new book is The Kingdom of Copper by S.A. Chakra Bordy, and the first book is... Where'd you go? The City of Brass, S.A. Chakra Bordy. This one was kind of slow to start, but I ended up loving it. And I wonder if when I go back and reread, it's not as slow. Anyways, I forget if it's Nari or Nari. She has never believed in magic. Certainly, she has power. On the streets of 18th century Cairo, she's a con woman of unsurpassed talent. But she knows better than anyone that the trades she uses to get by, palm reading czars, healings, are all tricks. Both the means to the delightful end of swindling Ottoman nobles and a reliable way to survive. 
But when Nari, Neri, accidentally summoned an equally sly, darkly mysterious Jin warrior to her side, I like the darkly mysterious, I did like that, to her side during one of her cons, she's forced to question all she believes. For the warrior tells her an extraordinary tale across hot, windswept lands. Sands? Sands. Teeming with creatures of fire and rivers where the mythical marriage sleep. Fuck, I can't keep doing this. Past ruins of once magnificent human metropolises. Metropolises? metropolises, and mountains where circling birds of prey are not what they seem, lies Devabad, the legendary city of brass. A city to which Neri, Nari, is irrevocably, irrevocably bound. But in Devabad, with gilded brass walls laced with enchantments, and behind the six gates of the six jinn tribes, old resentments are simmering. And when Neri decides to enter this world, she learns that true power is fierce and that magic cannot shield her from the dangerous web of court politics. That even the cleverest of schemes can have deadly consequences. After all, there is a reason they say to be careful what you wish for. He's a genie in a bottle, you gotta rub him the right way. Those are all of my books. I'm in a weird mood today, guys. That's it for this, I don't know what word I was about to use. I cycled through readathon, TBR, wrap up. This is a book haul. Need caffeine! I worked at 5.15 this morning and I went to sleep last night, 12.30 I think it was. My alarm went off at 4. Snooze that shit for an hour. Anyways, let me know down below in the comments if you've read any of these and what you thought of them and any new books that you got recently because I'm nosy. It's fine. I've accepted it. As always, to stay updated with my current reads and how I'm feeling about them, you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Goodreads, all at your book nerd Zoe, which I will leave linked down below in the description box. Oh, Cuddy's home! Hi, Beals! What the hell was I saying? <laughs> Social media. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe, and I hope you all have a wonderful day and get at least a little bit of uninterrupted reading time. I ran for 10 steps and I'm out of breath. <sighs> Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. What the hell? Oh, my God.